Hi everyone, I wanted to do a video about my Ardu Pilot uh, Mega 2.0. Um, this is a little impromptu because I put it in the plane and had to fix up a few bits. So I've pulled it all apart, as you can see, and set up a little bench on my desk. Um, and I thought I'd better do a quick video before I put it all back together so I don't have a tripod or anything at the moment. Uh, long story, well it's in the car. Um, so here's a quick video. So here it is, my little, uh, this was 200 bucks from DIYDrains.com and I must say it's pretty awesome. Um, there's the back even though that's upside down. Uh, there you go, excuse my shaky hands. Um, and I didn't get the compass, uh, sorry the GPS version. Uh, in the full version there's a little GPS that goes on the top here. Um, now that is here because I paid a little extra and got the external GPS. Um, I think that was a good idea because this GPS is a little sensitive to other electronics, especially the camera and the video equipment seem to really mess it up. So um, it's good to be able to put the GPS, well, I'm going to move it even from there. Uh, it gets a lock that far away from the camera but it takes a little while and loses it. So I'm going to put it out on a wing or something, we'll see how that goes. Um, but anyway, here it is. Um, so I thought I'll just give you a quick demo of it. Um, you plug the USB in here, excuse me while I do this with two hands, there we go, and that turns up on the laptop in a minute, you can watch all the little lights flash and stuff, I'm even getting the shadow in here, sorry guys, bit of a dodgy video, but there you go, um, so the lights flash, and it's all good, and then you can hit connect on the screen, you can see the laptop screen. I can't even see the mouse. I'm having to work the laptop by looking in the back of the camera. Uh, connect. And that tries to connect and loads all of these parameters. Here we go. Um, which is basically just loading all your plane settings and things. Uh, that takes a minute. Uh, and then this goes to disarmed. Um, and then in a sec it'll go to armed. How exciting. Um, anyway, while it does that, I should have actually put this back in its case. You do get a plastic case now, uh, which is very good. I put some Velcro on the bottom of mine to put it in the plane. Um, and then that sort of sits there and you can see how that goes over all of your pins. Um, so I might actually do that in a sec. Well, I'm trying, going to try not to pause the video. This is just going to go straight on YouTube unedited. But I'll hold it by the USB thing and you can see there now that that's actually supposed to go the opposite way because that's the horizon tilted if you can imagine the plane turning. Um, and it goes up and down so you've got all your tilts and you've got a compass so even without GPS you can see the compass moving around. Um, only just because the GPS isn't plugged in. Um, the compass you have to calibrate. That was actually my one thing. I did a whole test flight and everything with a dodgy compass. So let me just show you the calibration quickly. I won't do it, but I'll show it to you. You go to configuration, which lets you set up all your radio and all your parameters and stuff. And you go to hardware options. And you've got your compass there, enable compass. Uh, you've got to do your declination, but it says that in the manual. But just hit live calibration, um, and it gives you a little prompt of what to do. And anyway, with it in live calibration, you then pick the, the APM2 up, and you have to twist it around all its axes, like give it a full twist on all its different axes, um, and that calibrates the compass. But anyway, my compass was way off and, and spinning, like with it just sitting still, the compass would spin around in circles and stuff. Um, until I calibrated it and now it's wonderful. So do the live calibration. Um, anyway, getting to the point again, I've also got an airspeed sensor which was extra, um, but if you can see airspeed enabled. Uh, that's in the plane, but that's here. You get your little bit sticking out the nose um, and then that goes through these two little tubes. Well, you get one tube and cut it in half to the little airspeed sensor there, which then goes with flies and wires, we excuse all the mess in there, um, to the APM2. Now that came already configured for me, I just, I bought the airspeed sensor off DIY drones as well. And I was plugged it in, flew the plane, I mean, you know, I didn't have a radar gun to test it or anything, but the airspeed sent 
quite accurate just straight off the bat so that was handy um, going by the GPS actually it was pretty accurate um, so that was good it was a beautiful windy day um, also okay well I guess the next bit um, I'm just gonna unplug this actually I don't even think I need to unplug it I'm just gonna put it in its case because I feel dodgy about holding it around um, so that just goes there Oops. and then that I think I need it that way goes there um, I don't know if you can if I put that here there we go you can even see me screwing it up like the camera sitting there just quickly I'll just put two screws in and that'll let me play it around now there are actually I should have showed you this before I put it in there's instructions on the APM2 for CPP or for PPM um, which says to solder a little pad on the back uh, which I found didn't work although then again I didn't have a PPM receiver as it turned out um, but on the forums the old the APM1 method uh, which seems to work for this is to get a little bind or sort of little um, servo end or servo end I don't know what they're called now um, and anyway connect the servo signal that's grounds always on the outside on all three ground 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 on the outside positive obviously in the middle and signals always on the inside um, so connect the signal pins 2 and 3 on the input. These are the input pins. Do that. And then you get your CPPM receiver, which oh, that's why I've just bought another new receiver. I've got so many receivers now. The V8R7SP by FreeSky comes with CPPM by default. You don't need to do any mods or anything. So actually I only just bought that tonight, or it just arrived. Um, plug that into pin 1. And turn on our remote the R9X gotta love the R9X um, and then that should be it now I haven't actually tested just doing that with it on but let's just try it we'll go back to radio calibration whoops radio calibration and now if I move the ailerons no that doesn't work okay uh, maybe we need to actually unplug that oh I see of course it's disconnected there's a bit of a power thing um, that the uh, when you plug your receiver in it kills the power just for a brief instant and the APM I think the USB can't provide quite enough power but I think a little capacitor or something might not hurt for that um, but anyway that should be reconnecting yeah. here we go there's link connecting there we go um, while that's connecting also I've connected like that's got all eight channels coming out of the battery port uh, on the um, receiver and I've also plugged my camera straight into channels six and seven um, that's just the way I want to do it um, um, I'll get to that later anyway so there's the camera working straight off the receiver just to look left and right um, and then you can also see the channel six. No, you can't. So you should be able to see, but channel. Oh, except I plugged the bloody. Oh no, that's right. Well, that works. Uh, Elons work. So why doesn't channel six work? Oh yeah, there we go. You can see channel 6 also goes on the uh, APM2. So if you wanted to dual channel something, um, you could. Here you go, zoom the way you can't. Yeah, there we go. So you should be able to just see channel 6 in the corner. And you see the camera and the controller. Beautiful. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you, really. Um, just quickly, I guess, raving on still. It's a long video now. Um, if you go to firmware you're going to need to do this but all this is in the instructions it gives you all of your different um, things that it can fly um, so obviously I pick plane and it says are you sure you want to upload the plane software now I don't because it's gonna wreck all my settings but um, so that's all you do really you just buy it brand new sit it down on the bench plug the USB in install the software 
tell it it's a plane or a quad or whatever. Never even seen that one before, but I guess you can make one of them. Um, and then it uploads the software and you plug it in and away you go. It's really pretty simple for that. Um, I've, I'll just give you a quick look in my plane. Um, I've got my video all the way down the back there. I've got my ESC, which I'm going to shorten that cable. I've just been another on the to-do list for a while is make the ESC to a motor cable a bit shorter. Uh, OSDs in the back there. That's got to come forwards because I can never reprogram it without pulling the plane apart. Uh, APM goes on this little dot there. Batteries go here. Um, got the speed controller there. Got the second BEC. Um, I've, I've pulled out the jumper. There's a little jumper in this. They're the output pins, and there's a jumper to power the whole BEC, whole APM. I digress. Um, anyway, I've got a second BEC for the output. Uh, sorry, for the servos minus the camera servos, which is why I'm doing them like that, so that they don't chew up power on the, um, the back here. And I've got a back in here for the APM2, which is 5 amps, which is way too much, but that's cool. Better too much than too little. Um, so that's my plane and airspeed at the front. Um, that's about it. Uh, I have actually test flown it once with the camera, uh, with the compass um, not working properly, so the navigation was pretty crap. Um, but uh, I'm going to take it for another test flight, um, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, except that I think it's going to be raining. So weather permitting, another test flight will be on a weekday I've got off soon. Um, and I'll post that video as well so you can see how well all the controls work and stuff because it does work really well. And that was, I tested it, you can see they're now up to 2.5 on the software. This was with 2.4. Um, and they've said that's one of the major improvements between 2.4 to 2.5 is 2.5 is much more stable in flight. Now I thought 2.4 was pretty stable in flight, I must say. Um, so 2.5 should be awesome. Um, now, got any questions, let me know. I guess that's the best one and I'll include them in my next video because this one's really long now. And I'll also edit the next one too so you won't have to listen to me rave on for a whole bunch of time. Um, so yes, subscribe if you haven't, although you probably have. Um, and let me know what you want to see in the next video when I have this in the plane and we'll go flying and show you how well it all works. Okay, thanks for watching. See ya.